on behalf of 24HourAnswers.com, I welcome you to today's lesson. In this video, we're going to look at the intervals of increasing and decreasing of a rational function, and this involves us first finding the derivative, finding the critical points, and then creating some test values to test for our intervals of increasing and decreasing. In a previous video, we've already found the critical values of this rational function, and a critical value or point is when the derivative at that particular value is equal to zero, or when the derivative at that particular value does not exist. In that video, we found the derivative. We also went ahead and established one critical point quickly by finding the derivative and saying that the derivative is not defined when x is equal to negative 3 halves because negative 3 halves, if we substitute that into the denominator, we will get zero. We proceeded with the derivative, setting the derivative equal to zero, and then we ultimately solved this quadratic to get two more critical points. So bringing some of that useful information from that previous video, I highly encourage you to go check that out to find those critical values. We have these three critical points. And I also have the derivative copied over here as well because this can be helpful in allowing us to determine the signs of our derivative. So I've placed my three numbers on a number line and we want to pick some test values that lie to the left of negative two, in between negative two and negative 1.5. That's that negative three halves, by the way, right there. Then we have to pick a test value in between negative 1.5 and negative one, and then another test value to the right of negative one. Even though the derivative is undefined when x is negative 3 halves, we still have to include that and test a value in between these particular spots to determine intervals of increasing and decreasing. So taking some test values, anything to the left of negative 2, such as negative 3, anything in between negative 2 and negative 1.5, such as negative 1.75, anything in between negative 1.5 and negative 1, such as negative 1.25, and anything to the right of negative 1, such as 0. We want to test the signs of these in our derivative. And recall, when a derivative is positive, a function is increasing. When a derivative is negative, a function is decreasing. And that's exactly what we can determine right here. I'm going to use the calculator to test these signs. This can be a little bit more cumbersome than like a quadratic or a polynomial because those we can quickly determine signs and we don't really care about the value. So let's take the negative three and let's plug it into this derivative. Now a way that I do this is I will go ahead and type out my derivative and I'll actually use the variable x and then I'll store a value such as negative three or negative 1.75 and I'll plug it into that derivative. Now, obviously, we have a TI-84 here. We could graph this and look at it, but this idea that I'm going to show you here works on any calculator that has a store button. A lot of scientific calculators have a store button as well. So let's take that negative 3, and I'm going to store it for x, but you can store it for any variable you want. And now I can refer back to x instead of having to plug in negative 3 and then changing it and plugging in negative 1.75. Here is my derivative in the calculator. I just typed all this stuff over here. And since the calculator is seeing an x, it's going to take a negative 3 and plug it into all those values. So when we do that, we get a positive number, 4 ninths. So therefore, the sign of f prime of x, the sign of our derivative, is positive for any value to the left of negative 2. Now, this does imply that our function is increasing on this interval, but we'll come back and address all of those once we plug in these other values as well. So repeating this process, negative 1.75, I'm going to store it for x. And then I'm going to come right back up to this derivative function that I have typed in. I can press enter on that to bring it right back. And now it's going to plug in negative 1.75 for x. We get a negative derivative value here. Now we don't want to assume that this is always going to alternate. As a matter of fact, it's not going to alternate here. Uh, right here we have a vertical asymptote and we did discuss that back in the original, the first video on finding the critical values of this particular rational function. But uh, let's plug in negative 1.25 and let's plug in zero and let's get the signs of our derivative there. Notice ironically that we get the exact same value for our derivative here. That's coincidental. Sometimes that'll happen, sometimes it won't. But what we care about is the sign of the derivative. The derivative is negative for any value on this interval right here. So we're throwing a negative there. And then last but not least, let's plug in zero to see what the sign of our derivative is going to be for this particular interval right here. We get four ninths. 
Now you may wonder, why am I getting that same value there that we got back here? We don't care about the actual value of the derivative here. All we care about is the sign. Now, it, coincidental here, but since you know negative three is one value from negative two, and then zero is one value from negative one, and this particular function, the way this function is set up, that's what's causing us to get the four ninths and the four ninths, and you know we got the same value for these two as well. That does not always happen. Again, just focus on the sign. Therefore, once we have the signs of our derivatives, when the derivative is positive, we have an increase in function, so we have it here and here, and then our function is decreasing on these two intervals, but we have to separate these two intervals, even though you may think from negative two to negative one, the function is decreasing, at negative 1.5, the function is not defined. Remember, we have a vertical asymptote. If you plug negative 1.5 into the original f of x, that denominator will be zero. Therefore, we must separate these intervals right here. So finally, our intervals of increasing are going to be all values of x from negative infinity all the way up to negative two. That is this interval here. Since x can be any value to the left of negative two, that goes all the way to negative infinity, but we come up and we stop on negative two, and we want to put a parentheses around this, not a bracket, because at negative two, the function's actually constant. We have something changing there. The function's neither increasing nor is it decreasing. But we also have one more interval as well from negative one to positive infinity. All values to the right of negative one, so from negative one to infinity, our function is increasing as well. Our two intervals of decreasing are from negative two to negative 1.5, which is that vertical asymptote we talked about earlier, and also from 1.5 all the way to negative one. These are our intervals of increasing and decreasing. Now let's take a look at Desmos to verify these answers that we have here as well. So notice as our function f of x, as we move from left to right here, from negative infinity all the way up to negative two, this function is going up from left to right. The function is increasing. And we did say from negative infinity to negative two, that x value, the function is increasing. But also notice from an x value of negative one on to positive infinity. As we go from left to right, starting at the x value of negative one, our function is also increasing on this interval as well, and we did say that. Our two intervals of decreasing are from the x value of negative two, right here to this vertical asymptote, that x equals negative three halves. This function goes down. Not only there, but on the other side of our vertical asymptote, from negative three halves all the way to negative one, our function is decreasing as well. But it's very important to separate these two intervals since we have a vertical asymptote, implying our function is not defined there and our derivative is definitely not defined there either. And there you have it, intervals of increasing and decreasing of a rational function. Uh, again, I encourage you to go back and check out how to find those critical values of that rational function because in the next video, we'll be talking about maximums and minimums, and in future videos, we will discuss concavity for this function as well. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel for more videos. Links to our social media are in the description below.